Good morning, Celebration Church. We're happy you're here. Won't you stand on up and join us in worship?
to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving Now nah, you ain't welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul This wayward son has found his way
As we run with perseverance the race that has been marked out for us, or in other words, this journey that we call life. It goes on to tell us that we should consider the amount of opposition that Jesus encountered for, from sinners so that we would not grow weary or lose heart. Church, if the race that has been marked out before you is leaving you weary or losing heart, can I encourage you this morning to consider what it is that you have fixed your eyes upon? Are you spending your time gazing at the storm that has unweathered you and untethered you? Or have you fixed your eyes on the Savior? Because we can have joy in chaos. We can have peace that makes no sense when we build our lives on Jesus and then fix our eyes on Him. You know, there are so many things that I love about Sunday mornings, but one of them is the way in which I'm able to just recalibrate myself a bit. So maybe this morning it would be a great time for you to refocus your eyes as well. Because Jesus, He has never failed won't start now. He won't. So church, let's join together now and let's pray the way that he taught us. When he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, church, why don't you welcome some people around you before you find your seats this morning? While they're doing that in the room, as always, I want to welcome all of you who joined with us online. We're just so delighted that you are part of the Celebration family. We hope that you are blessed by service today. We'd love for you to say hello to each other on whatever platform it is that you're enjoying service this morning as well. Well, as you're finding your seats this morning, I would love to take a moment and just welcome any of you who might be visiting with us for the first time this morning. Welcome. We are truly just so delighted that you found your way through our doors, or maybe you found us out there online as well. Celebration Church is what's referred to as a convergent church. What this means is that we strive to blend together the evangelical, the charismatic, and the sacramental influences into one uplifting church worship service. We truly do hope that you'll be blessed um, by that blend. If today is your first time with us, we do have one very small ask of you. You'll notice in the seat backs that there are some cards called a connection card. There's also a little QR code there if you like to do things on your phone. At any rate, on that card, it just asks you for some very basic contact information. If you would be willing to fill that out today during the service and then just drop it in the buckets with the ushers on your way out today or you can submit it on your phone, we would truly be grateful. 
We want you to know that we're not going to hassle you in any way, shape, or form, um, nor will we sell off your information or anything weird like that. But we really would love the opportunity to simply send you a letter or maybe it will be an email thanking you for spending this time with us. And then in that communication, we would love to give you just a little more information about the church as well as some next steps you can take if you decide that you would like to find out even more but please know that we truly are honored to have you spending this time worshiping with us this morning, and we hope that you will be blessed by it as well. I do have just a couple of announcements before we get to the news this morning. Um, I want to let you know that just a quick reminder, if you are somebody who sponsors a child through Compassion International, this coming Saturday, we're gonna meet at nine o'clock here in the Bayside Room, right off the side of the lobby, just to do some letter writing. So if you're interested in just coming and joining us um, at that time, we'd love for you to be here. That's nine o'clock on Saturday. Um, I wanna let you know also that in a couple weeks, we have a worship night coming up. You're going to hear about that in the news. But as part of that service, we're going to actually um, offer an opportunity to do water baptism. So if that's something that's just been sitting on your radar for a while, we'd love to encourage you to take that next step in your faith journey. If you haven't already been um, fully immersed in water baptism, we have classes that are going on today and next Sunday after the second service. And there's also a virtual class coming up. But if you go to the church website, you can just click on um, class registration and you can see all the times and options for that. Um, and then lastly, um, you will hear that tomorrow morning, the tickets go on sale for our women's Christmas extravaganza, which is just such a big and lovely event we do every year here at the church. But for those of you who are here this morning, ladies, if there's any of you who have never been to the extravaganza but would really love to go, we're gonna do a special just first-timer sale this morning while you're here at church. Um, so if you have never been and would really love to go, you can purchase tickets today ahead of everybody else. We'll let you purchase up to two so you can, of course, bring a friend with you. As you leave today, you'll just see a table and a television out there um, where you can go over and get tickets. They're $25 for the morning, and that includes breakfast, the speaker, the program, door prizes, all kinds of great things. We've got shopping, so many things that you would love. So just know that that's for you, and that's really a lot. So Believe it or not, there's even more for you. You're going to get that in the news. Hi, my name is Savannah, and welcome to Celebration Church. Our annual Women's Christmas Extravaganza will take place on the morning of Saturday, December 7th. We've got our hostesses in place and set for a beautiful atmosphere, an incredible speaker who will help us usher in the Christmas season, and a great variety of vendors coming to help you get an early start on some Christmas shopping. There are a few details we still need to put in place, one of which is you, the women of Celebration Church, and any friends you might want to invite to a beautiful Christ-centered morning. Tickets officially go on sale tomorrow and can be purchased through the events tab on the church website. Tickets usually go pretty quickly, so don't delay. We hope to see you. Celebration Church believes and stands with families as they choose to dedicate their little ones to the Lord. If you have a little one you'd like to dedicate in the presence of the church at our dedication on November 3rd, email us at dedications at celebrationchurch.tv. We'd love for you to join us for a special worship night on Sunday, November 10th at 6 p.m. This will be an evening of worship, prayer, and time together. Whether you're new or have been here for years, it's a chance to come and experience God in a deeper way. So mark your calendars, invite a friend, and we'll see you on November 10th at 6 p.m. This week is step three of our monthly growth track. At step three, you'll be introduced to the Celebration Dream Team and the values we aspire to as Celebration Volunteers. Learn how you can be a part of the team that's making a difference by serving in dozens of ways all across church life. Join us in person this Wednesday, October 30th at 6.30 p.m. for step three. Growth track information and registration can be found online at celebrationchurch.tv. Thanks for joining us today. Please enjoy the service. Coming to the Meyer Theater, a couple's comedy night starring comedy legend Yakov Smirnov. The young bride standing in the back of the church. She can't wait to get married. All she can see is him and the altar and the aisle. And she's thinking, I'll alter him. 
<laughs> also appearing, author of Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage, Mark Gunger. Asking a man to do something once is like never having asked him to do it at all. <laughs> Don't miss this amazing, fun, and enlightening evening for you and your special someone. The show starts at 7.30 p.m. Saturday, November 2nd at the Meyer Theater in downtown Green Bay. Don't miss this chance for a great night out for just the two of you. Before deer hunting and the holidays kick in, to purchase your tickets, visit MeyerTheater.org. That's MeyerTheater.org. Good morning. Yes, good morning, church. Will you please stand with me as we recite together the Apostles' Creed this morning? This is our statement of faith and what we believe here at Celebration Church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who for us and for our salvation was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the fellowship of believers, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome uh, in this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Phil Gunger. I'm the guest speaker today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you've been a member here for a while, you remember me. I used to go to church here. <laughs> it was fun getting a jam. So uh, uh, for the last year, actually next Sunday marks a year. I've been down in Fox Valley preaching there. I'll talk about more about that later. But uh, one of the things I did here was I oversaw the music. And like I was the, kind of ran all the music. And so what would always happen is, you know, uh, Becky would look at me for cues, you know, when, when the song's ending and when to come up. Well, this morning, I'm just chilling. I'm just playing. I'm up there having a good time. And she kind of looks at me towards the end of that last song. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so she comes on up. I'm like, oh, maybe the song ends here. I don't know. And then she gets there and I see Deanna go, no, 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 we still have more song. Uh, <laughs> so if you come back again next service, you'll get a little bit more of that last song. Uh, <laughs> but I left. I was like, she looked at me, and I was like, no help. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Just hanging out. So uh, that's my bad, Becky. Sorry. I know it seems like I should probably know what's going on, but I was just hanging out, following everyone else. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, uh, but yes, welcome in this morning. Uh, I take offering now, don't I? Do it. No, I don't. <gasps> Things have changed. How dare you? I didn't get the memo. Okay, great. Well, offering, just a reminder again, give. If you haven't already given, you're going to give again at some point. And, uh, and do that, you know? That'd be good. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> if I can get that quoted somewhere. Uh, but if you are a guest, feel no pressure to give. That's what I tell my church. Your guest, don't feel pressure to give. If you do call this place your church, feel a little bit more pressure. Um, uh, but anyway, so okay, I can skip all of that stuff. Okay, I want to get into this now. Um, uh, yeah, so I've been here for a while. My father is Pastor Mark. Uh, we did a pulpit swap today, so he's down in the Fox Valley, and I'm here with all y'all. Uh, so yeah, he just has one service, um, but it'll be cool to be down there. They haven't seen him down there um, in real life flesh for quite some time. Uh, so the the church down there, uh, for those of you you no, know, we you know we used to do where uh, we would broadcast the sermon here, and it would go down there. And uh, a few years ago, we thought, do we need to relook at this model or something? And we were thinking of uh, changing it more into a, its own own preaching. Remember, we had a, a campus in Stevens Point. We gave that to that pastor, let him go, and then I was going down um, to Fox Valley uh, to lead there. 
and it was exciting, you know, and uh, fun. I get to go be the guy, which, you know, careful what you ask for, right? Uh, so going down there, but it has been so wonderful. Usually people ask me, how's it going? So to tell everyone, it's going really well. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been fun. We're starting to see uh, new faces pop in now. The first almost part of the year was me getting to know people and how does this work. And uh, honestly, for myself too, it's been a really uh, wonderful thing. It's been beautiful to go there. You know, I've been a part of larger church for most of my you know, church career, uh, you know, and, and so getting to go from here into a small church, it's really a beautiful, wonderful thing. I mean, you walk in and every, like everyone knows you, everyone knows each other. It's like, you know, they're all buddies and hanging out and it's, it's great and it's wonderful. And so, you know, when you're a visitor and you come into the church the first time, they notice you, you know, and they'll say, Hey, how's it going? Come here. Hey, did you meet so-and-so? And they're just like, making things happen, and it's wonderful. Um, now, what I was used to here was, uh, you know, we have a staff, and things happen. You know, like when I came to church this morning, I didn't have to sit and think, like, is someone going to come in and turn on the lights? You know, the bathroom's going to be clean, those kind of things. It happens, you know. Gary and his minions make this place look wonderful, get it ready, so you guys can just walk in, don't have to think about anything. So I was there for a little bit, and all of a sudden I thought, who cleans this place? I had no idea who was cleaning it. Someone must be cleaning it because the bathrooms aren't dirty anymore. The garbage been empty. And it's like you go, I'm like, I don't think the Holy Spirit's doing it. Uh, if so, we got to, you know, uh, document this. But, you know, you kind of ask people and it was this real just like teamwork thing. Well, so-and-so does this, that, that. And it's so cool and it's wonderful. And I'm like, oh, but who's in charge of it? Nobody. And I started going through more and more things. Found no one was in charge of anything. They were just sort of making church happen down there. Now, as someone who it's very organized up here, it about gave me a heart attack, <laughs> right? Because who's doing it? What if it doesn't happen? Who do you go to? You know, chain of command. They're just like, hey, man, we're just hanging out. So uh, doing a great job. So, so we had to put some organization to thing. Of course, you know, it's one of those things where everyone loves to help, but as soon as you ask who wants to be in charge of it and manage it, all of a sudden, you know, that's, their arms got real heavy, you know, couldn't raise them. I tried, Pastor, I couldn't raise it. Uh, so I had to, you know, uh, uh, tell some people I felt the Lord was calling them, um, <laughs> you know, to, to take some things. And so it's been fun uh, doing that. But what, uh, what for me has been so neat is kind of going in and like we, we aren't able to do everything that you guys get here. Hopefully you know how blessed you are here. One, to have this amazing facility. You have just excellence everywhere you look. The kids program is awesome. The teens program is awesome. We just had the father-daughter ball uh, this last week, which is just awesome. My daughter looks forward to that every year, you know, so that we can get there, and then she immediately abandons me and hangs out with her friends. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's so cool, and, and you know, you sit and you think, and you go, man, it'd be so cool to do something like that. I'm like, wait, we, we're, we're a small church, you know. Finances aren't our thing. Uh, staff, you know, it was, it's, it's me, you know, um, and so I've had to start to think, like, okay, like, yeah, what's, what's the most important thing we do at church? Like, like, what's our core thing? And it's just kind of been focusing on that. Now, listen, I have ideas and I have visions, um, but I've got, you know, there wasn't really anyone else to jump in with me on those things. And so there was a time there where I was getting kind of frustrated. Like, well, what do I do? How do I work on something? And, and, and we were going through and we've been studying uh, for a few months now, walking through Jesus. Because I thought, you know, number one thing, that we need to do as a church is we need to help y'all know Jesus, right? And not just know of him. Amen. You can clap for that, whoever was going in there, talking over the clap. Yeah. Now you're all guilted into it. Now I feel bad. Okay, I should have kept going. But the idea here is to help people to know Jesus. And again, a lot of people know of him. Some people grew up in a church and they're familiar with him. Even if you didn't go to church at all, we live in a post-Christian world. You know, which means they know of God and Jesus and they understand cross, thing, but they don't really know him. And so it's been fun to go through. So we've been going through John just kind of verse by verse because John does a great job of helping uh, us understand who Jesus is. And as I was going through, all of a sudden something started popping out uh, of me in here. And it was how many times Jesus would do miracles, but only when other people got involved. You know, you think about uh, the big story where he fed the 5,000. 
And, you know, he was going to do this miracle. Now, I'm sure Jesus, you know, could have just uh, told everyone to bow their heads, open up your hands, and we're going to make it rain tacos, you know, which would be my miracle uh, if that I would do. Uh, which, of course, if you have a, any children of the last 10, 15 years, you're familiar with the It's Raining Tacos song. Okay, I assume that would be playing as well in angelic voices. It's raining tacos. But he, he could have done something like that. But he says he sees the need, and he turns, you know, to Philip at the time. He's like, hey, so... How do we feed these people? He's like, oh, Jesus, this would, so we don't you know how much it would cost to feed all these people and how are we going to make this happen? And he's just looking for it, someone to step forward. And then some little boy comes forward. You know, he's got like his Chick-fil-A uh, meal, right? And he's got a few fish and some loaves and says, take this. Now, what's interesting is that kid did not have enough to feed. He could have simply said, I don't have food to feed everyone. But he goes, here, take what I have. And Jesus multiplies it and feeds the 5,000. Even the miracles like where he, he heals the man who was born blind and he spits in the mud and rubs it on the guy's eyes, <laughs> which, you know, uh, I'm glad that we've just anointed with oil now. You know, if there's a thing where you came forward today and Pastor Becky's got some mud there and allow me to spit in the mud and wipe it on whatever your ailment is, you'd be like, actually, my shoulder's feeling better, thanks. Uh, you know, he does that and then tells the guy to go and wash it. And the guy's obedient and he washes it, his eyes. You have time after time where all of a sudden I'm realizing like, wait, Jesus is still, I believe he's still in the miracle business and he still wants to do amazing things. He's just asking us to give what we have. And so all of a sudden, I just, I just, just kind of hit me and smacked me. He said, yeah, I mean, here we are. I've, I've got this small church and, you know, I've got some uh, people helping me, some wonderful friends from Green Bay who came. My sister-in-law came, you know, and helped, and helped me organize things. But it's like, we don't have like a, Children's, but you guys have like a children's team here. I would love someone just to step forward <laughs> and say, I'll help do that, you know, but we got some volunteers, we'll help. And I thought, you know, I'm excited because at some point I just know I'm gonna interact with someone, someone's gonna be called something in their heart. They're gonna say, okay, I help out. I, I, I'm not that great at it, I've never done this before, but okay, I'll do something. And then watch how it just blesses their life. Because you know that's happened here before. The Shomers. They didn't go, I want to do full-time ministry. They were just a family who was willing and said yes and gave what they had. And boom, look what they're doing now ministry-wise. And so part of me is like getting excited thinking, man, there's so much untapped potential in our church. And as I was coming in today, like there's even more people here. Think of all the untapped potential in here. But one of the problems is sometimes you come in and you see everything's so wonderful and everything's so great. Cool, I just get to sit back and chill out which is fine. If you want to need to sit and chill out, that's fine. But I'm telling you, y'all are missing out on some blessings God has in your lives. You simply need to step forward and say, I, I have this. I, I can give this. Can you do anything with this? It seems inadequate, but I, some of you probably, the Holy Spirit might be putting things in you about ministries to start. You know, sometimes when you come to a big church, if there's, you know, like one of the differences, at a small church, big church, if you came in here and the bathroom was super dirty, <laughs> toilets clogged or something, right, you'd go find a staff member to tell them, hey, the bathroom's dirty. You guys need to clean that. My church, the bathroom's dirty. I never hear about it because they just fix it. But it's because they know the need is so there. Sometimes we start to think like, oh, everything's taken care of. I don't need to jump in and help. But I'm telling you, you're missing out in God's blessings in your life. So I want to do this. I want to take a look at uh, the last chapter in John. Uh, chapter 21. So Jesus has, uh, uh, you know, been crucified, died, resurrected. He's, he's met, you know, uh, appeared a, a few times now. And um, John's closing out his, his uh, gospel here. And he's writing this last time that Jesus appears. And it is it's how he closes it. I want to take a look at this. And I want to hopefully encourage you guys to catch wind that he is calling you to something. I don't know what it is, but I'm guaranteeing you he's calling you to something, all right? So let's go through this, uh, uh, John 21. I probably have extra time now too, huh? Because we ended early? Just kidding. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Everyone just goes, oh, please, Lord, no. All right. <laughs> I'm just teasing y'all. Uh, John chapter uh, 21, verse 1. So it says, uh, afterward, Jesus appeared uh, to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee, and it happened this way. All right, so he's going to tell you the story of he appears again. John's writing this. He says, okay, so you have Simon Peter, 
Thomas, also known as Didymus. You have Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee. You have the sons of Zebedee. You have two other disciples who are together. So there's these seven guys, and uh, they're hanging out. And then uh, Peter says, I'm going to go out and fish. And then his bros say, yeah, man, we'll go with you. All right, so now what's going on at this time is Jesus, you know, they're following him. They think everything's gone awful because he's crucified, he's died, and then he resurrects again, and they've seen him a couple times, and Jesus basically just tells them, hey, just hang around, chill out. So they're kind of hanging around, not sure what to do, so I just kind of get this picture of Peter's probably like, you guys want to go fishing? Now, people will say, well, maybe he was doing it because he needed to you know, try to uh, make, get some fish. Remember, his profession was a fisherman. And, uh, you know, in Luke, it tells you that, uh, names some of the, the wealthy people who are helping to support the ministry of Jesus and they give them things they need. Uh, well, when uh, the religious leaders killed Jesus and they're looking for anyone else who follows him to kill him as well, it t- tends to, you know, the support tends to go down. Um, you know, you can imagine... Uh, if I said during the offering, give, thank you, we need your support, and watch out, there's snipers outside trying to kill you if you gave. You know, you'd be like, you know what, I think I forgot my wallet, actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any data, I can't uh, give online. Um, so some people think that, I don't know, I just get this picture of Peter's hanging around, he's like, let's go and fish. Although it was more work, I suppose, than just getting in a boat and a, you know, a Yeti full of your favorite uh, adult beverage. But they get in there, and then it says uh, that they went out um, all night, but they caught nothing. So then early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. So they just see this guy uh, off there, just some rando guy, and uh, he calls out to him, friends, haven't you any fish? Now, it was whatever the colloquialism of, you know, it'd be like today. He's like, hey, how are they biting? You know, you catching anything? And they're like, no. <laughs> and so now check this out. I think it's hard to get tone from Scripture, but I, when I read this, I think Jesus is having fun with them, and he's sort of teasing them. Check this out. He says, oh, did you try throwing your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. Now, these are professional fishermen. I'm sure that they realize there's two sides of the boat, okay, and they can go here or they can go there. Uh, it, to me, it's like going out there, and your buddy's fishing, and he's not catching anything. I said, well, yeah, it's because you're casting right-handed, man. Try, try left-handed cast. You'll catch some. I'm like, okay, right. So anyway, so then they go, and they're throwing the net. And then when they throw it on the right side, it says that they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Now imagine you are there. Some guys, how are they catching any fish? No, we haven't caught any. He's just trying on the right side. I think there's a bunch of fish on the right side of your boat. Yeah, okay, thanks, man. And then you throw it on the right side, and then all of a sudden, so full of fish, You've worked all night. Now it's so full of fish you can't come in. You would call that a miracle. And so here they are. And John's the first one to put two and two together. He goes like, what in the world? And it says, uh, then the disciple uh, whom Jesus loved, this is John talking about himself, a very humble guy, obviously. (laughs) But he keeps referring to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, He also likes to point out that he was faster than Peter. Um, Anyway, Uh, so he says to Peter, it is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and was just wearing his fishing speedo and he jumped into the water. (laughs) And then it says, the other disciples followed the boat, towing the net full of fish for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. Now when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. So again, you can see this. You just kind of get this image. They're sort of going and catch anything, throw it on the other side, a bunch. John catches it. That's Jesus. Peter just dives in right away. You know, it's like, I mean, we're going to go in, man. But, you know, he couldn't wait. He had to go in right away. And then they just haul in all of these fish. And then they get there, and it's like Jesus is getting ready to make them breakfast. So Jesus says to them, uh, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. He thinks it's amazing the net has not torn. I think it's amazing that Peter dragged in 153 fish from the boat onto shore. I did a little search to find out, man, how heavy is that? They estimate maybe about 750 pounds. Peter was a bro. Right? I mean, that guy, you know, he hauls that thing in. He's clearly a, a man's man and just rips that thing and pulls it all ashore. 
Now, uh, Jesus says to them, well, come and have breakfast. Now it says, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. Now this is interesting. Uh, the way this is written, it implies they couldn't recognize him other than the fact that they knew it was him. Um, a few theories on why that is. Uh, the two big ones are, you know, because Jesus' resurrected body that is just a little different and, you know, he's got a glow about him or something's a little different. Um, the other is that we know that he has scars, right? Because he tells Thomas, touch the scars in my hand, put your hand in my side. Uh, so if he has those scars, it could reason he's got scars all over his body because he was beaten you know, and so his face could be all messed up and everything, and so it might be just tough to tell who, who is this guy, um, but they know it, it is him, uh, and then Jesus came, he took the bread, and he gave it to them and did the same with the fish, and it say, he says, now this was the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead, so Jesus sees them, he's kind of toys with them, it's, it's almost like I, I consider this sort of the, the toying miracle, you know, in, in the way that I'm viewing it, uh, Phil's translation, don't have to put any theological thing behind that, but again, he's kind of joking with them, throw it on the other side, there's this miracle, we know who this is, and I just see him laughing, you know, <laughs> just giggling when he sees him catching all these fish, he's like, yeah, yeah, come on in, we're gonna, we're gonna eat now, and he sits down, and he's hanging out with these guys, having breakfast with them, and then, uh, as he's, he's sitting there, it says, then when they had finished eating, Jesus says to Simon Peter, hey, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? You know, yes, Lord, he says, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Now, if you're familiar with the story of Peter, do you remember what Jesus said he was going to do before he was ever arrested? He told Peter he was going to deny him three times. And Peter said, no, 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 no. Yeah, before the rooster crows. And then what happens? Jesus is arrested. Peter's kind of hanging around outside, and people start to kind of notice him, put two and two together. Hey, you were with him. You must be one of them. And three times he says, no, no. In the last time, it's like, emphatically, no, man, I tell you, knock it out. I'm not a part of him. I don't know him. I'm not one of his disciples. And after he does that, the rooster crows, and it hits him. Now, as you can tell here, Peter is an energetic guy. <laughs> He's clearly probably a big dude, you know. And in his mind, he thought he would never turn his back on Jesus. And then when the test came, he failed, and he did deny. Who knows what he was going through when all of a sudden Jesus rises from the dead again, and he sees him face to face. Now, they speak privately before this. We don't know what is all is said, but perhaps this was brought up, and Jesus tells him, you know, it's okay. But notice what Jesus is doing. He asks him once. He asks him twice. And then the third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And now this time, Peter is hurt because Jesus asked him a third time. He says, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. You know that I do. Why are you asking me? You're God. You know if I'm lying or not. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And then one more time, Jesus says, feed my sheep. See, Peter, who knows what he was going through, but he was on mission. He was doing work with Jesus. I mean, when Jesus first saw him, he said, change your name from Simon to Peter, which means rock. I'm going to build my church on this rock. Gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. And then he crumbles. And he probably, maybe he wasn't even thinking, I'm getting back into doing anything with Jesus again. Like, this is done. Who knows? I'll stay quiet in the back. Maybe that's why he went fishing. But Jesus calls him back into ministry. He restores him. And that's the business that Jesus is in. And it's simply what he asks, do you love me? Yes. And let's get to work. Do you love me? Yes. Then get to work. 
Do you love me? Yes. Get to work three times. He says that to him. I want to tell you today, Jesus is still calling each and every one of us, asking the simple question, do you love me? And if your answer is yes, his response is still the same. Well, then let's get to work. You know, for a lot of us, we don't think of jumping in and getting into ministry or thinking jumping in and, and helping with anything because to be quite honest, you consider it a mini miracle you made it here this morning. To think even beyond that, to help out, to do anything more that you might be called to do some kind of ministry is like, no, I'm so far from that. I still need to sit here and I still need to get uh, the, the teaching and I still need to grow. But you know something that's interesting about Jesus? Do you know when Jesus got his disciples, did he go into the synagogue and grab all the smartest, well-trained people? He grabbed fishermen. They knew nothing about it. What did he simply say? He said, follow me. And they said, okay. And look at the simple call here. Do you love me? Yeah, and let's get to work. See, there's a lot of people in here, and there truly is so much untapped potential in this church of ministry growth, of new things that we've never even thought, that Jesus is speaking to you. You know, you should come in here and you got the guy with the microphone up on the stage. It's like, well, he'll just tell us what to do and then he'll just take care of everything. And we are called to full-time ministry and there's a lot to do. But I'm telling you, I, I, I actually, I want the most for you. And I'm telling you, God has things he wants to do in your life. He's just asking, just do it. Oh, but Jesus, I don't know. I got, <laughs> I'm such, I feel like I barely made it through saved this week. You know what I mean? He's like, just do you love me? Well, yeah, then let's get to work. There's no big bar you have to jump through. You say, well, what is it that I'm supposed to do? I don't know. That's between you and Jesus. And if you think you hear something, you should come in. Meet with Becky. I feel God calling me to do this. Maybe you don't know what to do. Come in to Becky. Becky, I, I want to do something. What, what can I do? Here's what I have. I can give you this much time or I can give this or I have this to give. Can you use this at all? I mean, I would love to hear how stressed Becky is because you guys won't stop bugging her. That she's got meetings lined up <laughs> every half hour on the half hour of people standing outside her door. I'm next. What should I do? Emails flooding in. What should I do? What should I do? That would be a great problem to have, wouldn't it? And it's not because, oh, you just want the help. No, I, for the most part, everything here runs smoothly. I love it. Like I said, I got to come in here. I wasn't even paying attention if the song ends or not. <laughs> But I'm talking about for you. What is Jesus going to do in your life? What are you missing out on because you're not stepping forward? You know, there's two big commands that he gives us to follow him. Right? Remember, the first is to love God, and the other one is to love your neighbor. That doesn't mean you just, like, think nice thoughts about them. The way that that's written is you get involved and you help other people which is tough, because if you've met people, you know how hard that is. So he's calling this to Peter. He's telling him to do this, and then he's going to say, here's what it's going to cost you. Verse 18, he says, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself, you went where you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And then John says, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. He's telling him, just so you know, following me, get to work with me, will mean death for you. And if you see the story of Peter, indeed he was, he was crucified. Now there's stories, I don't know that how accurate they are, but that he even considered it himself so unworthy to die in the manner that Jesus did that he asked them to crucify him upside down. But he considered that a great honor. Now, fortunately, I'm telling you, I don't think death is in the cards for you. You know, you get involved, you start helping with something, but it's going to cost you something, isn't it? It might cost you a little bit of time. For some, it might cost you a little bit of money. You get a little bit of sleep, that precious Sunday morning sleep, which probably isn't so much a problem here. All those people are coming to the next service. 
But it's going to cost you something. And you can think, oh, but I don't know. I got, oh, I got time. And we're all busy. We all got a million things going on. Listen, at my campus, I've got like, like two things. You know, we've got the, uh, uh, we got lots of folks who are in the retirement age. And they just only have so much energy <laughs> to give. But they love helping out where they can. But there's certain things they just can't do. Then you look at the younger folks and oh, I wish we get more younger folks involved. I said, I would too. They're working jobs. And they have three, four kids. They're you know, by the time 8, 9 o'clock comes at night, they're trying to keep their eyes open. You know, they're passing out. And so they don't have much to give, but I start running into those people and say, what, what can you give? Because I'm telling you, God wants to do something. And you've started to see some of them come and they'll get in and they work it out and they'll kind of help out, you know, uh, at church doing different things. We've had some people come forward to help us, you know, um, uh, collect food to give it, you know, to a local uh, food drive because we're supposed to love people. You know, we don't just get to sit in, close the doors, and the world's out there, and they don't get to come in here. We're supposed to go out into the world, and we can't do much. We're small, but they're like, well, we'll do something. We'll help get, and we were, we were able to give, like, some 300-something pounds of food or whatever it was to the local food shelter, just our little, our little church. It was so much fun. And it's just exciting. We're just in the starting stages there, and I'm just excited to see what God has in store for people that are there, things that I could never think of, things that they have probably didn't even think of before, but when all of a sudden they just open up and they give, watch God do it. But it's going to cost something, and Peter, like us, thinks, wait, it's going to cost me <laughs> exactly what? Because he says he, uh, in verse 20, he says, Peter, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, John speaking of himself, so John says, so Peter turns around and sees me following him, and then verse 21, it says, when Peter saw uh, me, <laughs> he asked, well, Lord, what about him? <laughs> Man, what's it going to cost him? And Jesus said, man, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Ooh. And then John had to go through here and explain, because I think rumors were getting around that everyone thought John was never going to die. And he's like, he didn't say I'm not going to die. He said, what is it to you if I decide to have him not die? You know, so he kind of sets the record straight there. But Peter, very classic thing, you know, of like, man, it's, this must be what it costs. Everyone has to do this. He's like, and Jesus is just saying, no, no, no. That's what I've called you to do. You follow me. So like I said, I, I know there's some of you in here, you have something in your heart. You think maybe I couldn't do something. You think, are there already, oh, they'd probably do that so well. If they needed me, they'd come and ask me or I'm really busy. I don't know. And I'm telling you, you're missing out on what God wants to do in your life. He's calling you, follow me. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, let's get to work. And it's uncomfortable. That's a four-letter word, work. But there's something about when we take the little that we have, we take what we have and we give it to Jesus, he whoosh, all of a sudden miracles start happening. He starts showing up. What we want him to do is we want him to start the miracle, see it's working, and then jump on board. And he's just sitting there, just waiting. Come on, go do it. Yeah, but you could do that. Oh, you know, I think you'd be great at it. You should do that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so as we transition into our time of communion, there's some of you here, everyone's in different spots in their life. There's some of you, it's your first time in here today, and you're just looking for faith. And what Jesus might be saying to follow me just means like, follow, follow me, believe in me. Let's get serious about your faith. There's some of you here, but you've been coming for a while. But you know, you just kind of come in and get some word and then head back on out there, <laughs> cheer everyone on. And maybe he's calling you to do something. There might be some of you in here who you... Maybe like Peter, you were very involved in ministry, you were doing things, and that season passed, something happens, and you think, oh, that was in the past. I want to tell you, following Jesus is a job you never retire from. Doesn't matter how old you are, how much energy you have or don't have, what stage of life you're in, I'm telling you there's something Jesus is calling you into. And if you'll engage with that, watch what he does in your life, I'm telling you. It's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And that's what I want to see. I want to see just lives being blessed in here. I want to see the miracles that happen in this place. There's so much untapped potential in this church. It's crazy. If you all understand how wonderful you were, how much God can do with you, 
he'd be jumping on board. Let's do this thing. So I pray that for you today. So as we move into our time of communion, you just bow your heads. I'm going to say a prayer over all of us, just a prayer of forgiveness because we need to get right with God before we take of communion. And as we're going through this, maybe you can just sit there and if you're in that spot of just, just kind of wherever you're at, if this is the first time with your faith thing and just say, Jesus, I just want to start following you. I want to just change my life and start living right. Then just say that to him. If you're in a spot where you're like, Jesus, I, I do. I feel like there's more I could be doing. There's something I want to do. Help me, Lord. Speak to me. Give me wisdom on what that is. Maybe there's something you feel called to, but it's just kind of scary. Pray for the courage to go and do that. So whatever it is, you can give that to the Lord, but let me just pray for all of us right now. God, you tell us before we partake of the bread and the cup in obedience to the scriptures that we need to pause and examine ourselves so we do that now. If we have sinned against you in thought, word, or deed by what we have done or by what we have left undone, if we have not loved you with our whole heart, if we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves for the sake of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins, have mercy on us and forgive us of all of our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now listen, you don't have to be a member of Celebration Church to partake in communion with us, but we do ask that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You know, so if you're kind of on the edge and you're not sure you're checking out this faith thing, you can just let the communion pass by because it's not that tasty of a treat. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you want to partake with us, we encourage you to do that with us. Now the way that we do it here is the ushers are going to hand out the elements and then once everyone has received, just take them and hold on to them. And once everyone has received, then I will lead us all together in communion. Now the outside ring is grape juice and the rest is wine.
right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the wine that we partake of this morning. And we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would sanctify these elements. Make them be to us the body and the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. We'd given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, take this and divide it among you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. stand as we sing this through one more time. This morning, if you're here and today was actually the first time that you really made that commitment to follow Jesus, to start this faith journey, uh, we do have a book we'd love to give you. It's called New Beginnings. It's all about how to get started in this life with Christ. You can pick up a copy of that out there at the information counter. Now, did you already do offering or do I do it now? I'm doing it now. Okay. <laughs> That's the last thing I need. I forgot one thing, Dad. I forgot to take the offering. Um, you'd love that. Okay. So... I've teased this already, so the excitement is really built, you know. That's why I did that. It's one of those stay tuned things. All right. This is now the time we're going to uh, pause, take our tithes and offerings. If you are giving check and cash, let's see if I still remember all this stuff. You have an offering envelope in your seat back. You can take that, put your offering in there, fill it out. Uh, so we have your info so you can get the uh, credit on your tax records there. And then you can drop that off in the buckets as the... Yeah, so catching it. <laughs> I'm looking to her this time. Hopefully, thankfully, she does know what's going on. You drop them in. The, the ushers have the little um, uh, offering bags there. You can drop them in there. Otherwise, what most people have been giving digitally. And if you want to give digitally here, you can look there on the screen because that's when, tell me, yeah, you go to celebrationchurch.tv slash give, especially if you're watching online, you can do that. You click on that give button and it takes you in there and then you can give uh, there. Um, also, if you got the app, you can click uh, give there as well. Uh, truly, honestly, Thank you for the support that you guys have. You know, it's, it's too bad that everyone can't see uh, uh, all the lives that are touched. There's little tiny stories happening all of the time of people whose lives are touched. You know, people who, when they contact us, they're going through their worst day ever. And the ability to go there and to bless those people, it's your support that makes all of this happen. You know, and, when you, and I hope, too, when you guys give... It's not just a, oh, yeah, I better do this. Oh, yeah, I got to do this. But hopefully you're like the little guy with the Chick-fil-A meal <laughs> to Jesus, just saying, Jesus, this is what I have. Take it and bless it. Because it's when you give with faith like that that Jesus takes and does exceedingly more than we can imagine. Amen. So thank you for that. Okay, I have anything else? I can bless them and send them on out. All right, would you please stand with me? Allow me to say a prayer and a blessing over all of you as we head out this morning. Heavenly Father, 
We pray that you would so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so influence our wills that we might be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Now we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. And we'll see you again next week. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide this weary soul This bag of bones I tried with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting The vagabond And just when I to be